keep telling him thank you. We're going to just keep telling him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. This song is really simple, but I'm going to teach it to you today. And you carry it with you throughout the week. It just says, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Yeah. Thank you. 
Take a moment. Go ahead and bless him. Come on, Zion. Bless him. Hallelujah. We're not going to be entertained. We're going to bless him. Let the let what comes out of your mouth bless the name of the Lord. When you think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, that's it. Come on. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. It may sound strange without music, but we're going to praise him without music. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't need any accompaniment. Hallelujah. Because our voice is our praise instrument. Come on and bless him. That's it. I bless you, Father. I bless you for saving me. I bless you for keeping my mind. I bless you for protecting my family. I bless you for keeping ways out of no way. Can you continue to make ways out of no way? I thank you for my job. I thank you for my money. I thank you for my family. I thank you. Hallelujah. I thank you because you protect me. Even when I don't know I'm being protected, you keep me over the dangerous highways as I'm driving to and fro. You keep death back from me. I bless you. Come on, Zion. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. That's it. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you know you don't need anybody to pump and pry you? Hallelujah. You can bless the Lord on your soul and all that is within you. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And while you are blessing, go ahead and reach out to your brother, your sister, and bless them. Tell them you're blessed today. Just the fact that you're here, you're blessed. Just the fact that I see you, you're blessed. Hallelujah. You are looking at a blessed individual. You are looking at somebody who is the head and not the tail. You are looking at a king's kid. You are looking at the apple of God's eye. Come on and bless him. And bless your neighbor. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Hallelujah. I will be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Just in case when you woke up you didn't say thank you Jesus. Here's your opportunity to say thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Just in case you didn't say God I thank you that I can see. I thank you that I can hear. I thank you that my legs work. I thank you that my arms work. I thank you that my hands work. 
I thank you that I could get out of my bed, hallelujah, and stand on my own two feet. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, make your back. God. Yeah. May your almost a paradox right hallelujah we think that when bad things happen that God is not in control hallelujah but how many of you know even in the midst of difficulty even in the midst of what we consider bad God is good what makes him good because he sits on the circle of the universe he controls all things there is nothing I say often there is nothing out of his purview. Hallelujah. Grace be unto you. Hallelujah. And you say back to me, grace be multiplied. Grace be multiplied. Amen. Amen. It is a delight and an honor to be back in the house of worship with you all this Sunday afternoon, the third Sunday in the month of November. It seems like the year is fastly moving. Hallelujah. Somebody said flying by. But even in the midst of this year, hallelujah, as we approach the end of the year, the same God that started us off, hallelujah, in January, he's going to take us to December, hallelujah, and we will see that his goodness is from everlasting to everlasting. 
Hallelujah. That means his goodness is not bound by time. Hallelujah. He's not restricted by time. It's from everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. I greet you with the joy of the Lord. I lead Pastor Tony Page, and I'm so glad that you all have come out to worship with us, those that are physically here, those that are watching via our social media platforms. Hallelujah. We continue to uh, contest or confess that God is good. And the way I grew up, when we said God is good, the people said, and all the time, God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we want to keep those that we don't see in the sanctuary in our prayers. Hallelujah. Many are dealing with ailments and difficulties but even in the midst of difficulties I, I, I'm assured from his word he said he's a very present help in the time of trouble so even hallelujah you know how some friends will leave you when trouble comes hallelujah but he said I'm a very present he didn't just say I'm present he said I'm very present and not only am I present but I'm a help because it's one thing to be present, but you can't do nothing for me. Right? I, I, I appreciate your company, but can you, can you help me? Can you help me? So he not only is a present, but very present help in the time of trouble. Amen? How you all feeling this afternoon? Amen. Blessed and highly favored. I tell you, it's been a full weekend, hallelujah, starting with our three-hour prayer vigil on Friday, hallelujah, then we had prayer, the leadership had prayer on Saturday, as we always do, and, and then we're here in the house of worship on Sunday, and I'm so glad that you all are here. We're going to have Minister Sherry come and do our announcements, and then we'll come back and take us further into our worship service. Amen. 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 Testing. Praise the Lord, everyone. Good afternoon. Amen. So let's get to these announcements. All right. This is for November. Um, for anyone that was not here for the first November birthdays, anniversaries, acknowledgments, we ask that you please stand and we thank you. Anyone here? For the okay. Yeah. So the next one, as we look forward to Thanksgiving on Thursday the 28th, it's not too late to be a blessing. We will be blessing three families this Amen. Thanksgiving, Amen. three of them. Amen. Amen. And we need your help by donating a monetary gift. We have extended the donation cutoff to next Sunday the 24th. So let's show the love of Christ to those who are in need. No gift is too small. So please see Minister Ramona or any member of the InReach Outreach team to make a donation. Amen. Amen. All right. And then also, this is a new announcement here. Um, on November 26th, because I don't want to forget this, there will be an annual turkey giveaway. See Sister Keisha. Amen. If you all are interested in the giveaway or if you know a family that needs a turkey or and all of the, uh, the things that go with the dinner. Um, her chapter is giving turkey. They have a giveaway November 26th at 3 p.m. And this will be at the Faith Shepherd Baptist Church. Amen. The address is 3233 East Street, Southeast Washington, D.C. 20019. Amen. Okay. 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 Here at Face to Face, we know the importance of studying God's word. We believe when you know, you grow. Right. So please join us each Tuesday at 7.30 via Zoom. Over the next two weeks, we will continue to do a deep dive of the Beatitudes, which are found in Matthew's chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. 
All details for our Bible study will be sent to partners via our text in church app. Amen. Amen. Please join us for our morning corporate intercessory prayer every Wednesday and Friday from 630 in the morning to 7. We welcome you to join by dialing into our conference line at 319-527-4008. We know that prayer still works and it is a great way to start the day. Amen. Amen. We should do that every day. Amen. <laughs> Every fourth Sunday, our youth ministry, Youth in God's Face, meets during our regular service. We want them to enjoy a service that is tailored for them. For additional details, please see Minister Shea. Partners, please remember your commitment to our expansion campaign. We are now only 45 days from the end of the year. Therefore, we are asking you to please honor your commitment in an effort to help us obtain our overall goal. And if you haven't made a pledge, it is not too late to do so. Please see Sister Denise for additional information. If you have not signed up to receive our weekly text messages with updates concerning activities here at Face to Face Worship Center, you are definitely missing out. So please see Sister Denise or Elder Pam and provide them with your phone number and email address to start receiving our inform, inform, um, informative excuse me, text updates concerning the ministry. And also, please don't forget to visit our social media sites. Um, on Facebook, it's Face to Face Worship Center. On our Twitter, it's F2FWCMD. Instagram is Face to Face WC. And our website is Face to, I'm sorry, F2FWC.org. So thank you for your attention, and please mark your calendars accordingly. May God continue to bless and keep you, and enjoy the rest of the service. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand praise for those announcements. It's offering time here at Face to Face Worship Center. As you prepare your offering, please join us in making this declaration over your finances. The declaration will also be scrolling across your screen. Now repeat after me. I walk in financial abundance. God supplies all of my needs. Not half of them, but all of them. Satan, take your hands off my finances. Finances, I command you to be loose from the world system. Because I give tithes and offerings, I am blessed and not cursed. Therefore, God will see to it that I always have more than enough for myself and to bless others. There are several ways to give here at Face to Face Worship Center. Givelify, look for Face to Face Worship Center. Cash App, dollar sign, Face to Face WC. Our website at f2fwc.org and click the donate link or Zelle at 240-563-2792 and give your offering there. Father, we thank you for the generous giving of these your people. We pray according to Luke 6 and 38. As your people give, give back unto them good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give back unto them. May this be their season for financial windfall. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, how many of you all are, are being blessed by uh, us talking about the kingdom? Yeah. How many of, of you, is it helping to shift your perspective and how you're looking at what's going on in the world yeah. and how you are, you're looking at yourself? Yeah. How many kingdom citizens do I have in here this afternoon? How many king's kids do I have in here this afternoon? You know who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. You know that you are the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. By Christ Jesus. You, you know you are the head above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know where your enemy belongs? I love it. I love it. I love it. 
I love it. I love it. Hallelujah. We are going to continue, hallelujah, in that vein. And, and again, I shared this on Bible study. Um, but just be prepared because as we move into the new year, I shared this also on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. But we are going to be talking about the kingdom for the rest of 2024 and 2025. Because we need to shift our perspective. Hallelujah. So many are consumed with the government. And what's going on in, in the in the up and coming administration? But the word tells me the government rests where? Yeah, glory to God! It's on the King's shoulders. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So if it's on His shoulders, <laughs> I love it! I love it! I love it! So so God has charged us, Hallelujah, in the in this year and the up and coming year to shift us into a kingdom mindset like never before hallelujah so we're going to be looking at next year talking about kingdom living what does kingdom living looks like he has been inundating me and overwhelming me with kingdom principles minister shea and i'm like Phew. and so we, we, we you know our bible studies are going to be kingdom focused our sunday services are going to be kingdom focused Hallelujah. And praise minstrels, even as you find kingdom music, kingdom focused music, the words of the kingdom. We're going to begin to declare the kingdom. Hallelujah. Because one of the things I realized, we remember what we continue to hear. Repetitive learning. Hallelujah. So some of you are going to start dreaming about the kingdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you, when you used to complain, you're going to start hearing kingdom legislation come out of your mouth. Woo, glory to God. Because he wants to shift us. Hallelujah. He was even downloading um, more of, of, of what he wants to share with us in this lesson. As I was driving, I had to, you know, slow down and find these scriptures that he wanted me to include in this lesson today. So um, we're going to be coming out of three scriptures today. Our, our foundational scripture is going to be Matthew chapter 6, verse 8 through 13. Matthew 6, 8 through 13. Is that where you're coming from next week, Pastor? Look at God. I tell you, I love it. I love it. I love it. So Matthew 6 is line upon line, precept upon precept. Glory to God. So he, he's coming next week to add on to what we're going to share today. But Matthew 6, 8 through 13. I'm coming out of the King James Version. Mark eleven twenty four, and I want to read that out of the New King James Version. Mark eleven twenty four, and then I want you to go back to the Old Testament and just look at Job twenty two verse twenty eight. We talked about that in our prayer on Friday. Glory to God! And thank you, those of you that were able to join on our Zoom um, for our three hour prayer vigil. Those that of you that watched on YouTube and I share with you if you did not get a chance to join or to watch it is there on our YouTube channel face to face worship center and you can be a part of that three hour prayer vigil amen, amen. all right we're going to start with um, Mark eleven twenty four. when you got it look at your neighbor see if your neighbor has his or her Bible share hallelujah you got it all right. I only heard three people. You got it? Yeah. Amen. Mark eleven twenty four. And if you need me to hold hold up, say hold up. hold up. Hold up. All right. All right. We can hold up. We can hold up. Because I don't want you to take my word for it. I want your eyeballs to see. Hallelujah. For faith cometh by hearing. And Mark eleven twenty four. Mark eleven twenty four. All right. Therefore, I say to you. All things for which you pray and ask. Believe that you have received them and they will be granted to you. For all things for which you pray and ask. Believe that you have received them and they will be granted. Now I want you to notice the the, the, the text, uh, uh, and, and it says, in the past tense, when you pray and ask, and believe that you have received ED, not will receive, but you have already received, 
Because you prayed, and when you prayed, you asked. Y'all wow. see that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, 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 and then just to validate understanding not only that you receive it, he says, and they will be granted. Mm -hmm. But again, granted is ED. So it's past tense, right? So y'all got that principle. Okay. When you pray, you ask. And when you ask, you believe. And when you believe, you have already received. And because you have already received, it's going to be granted. It has already been granted. It's already manifested. Mm. So it's manifested even before it manifests. I have it before I have it. I have it. Say to your neighbor, I have it before I have it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I have it before I have it. Now, let's, 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 let's look at what the Old Testament says in Job 22, 28. Job says in Job 22, 28, thou shalt also decree a thing. Again, speaking, asking, declaring. He said, you shall dec decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. <laughs> so if I decree it, so Terry said, if I if I decree it, I'm going to see it. Say to your neighbor, if I decree it, I shall see it, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. My God, today. Hallelujah. So where do we get these principles and what does this mean? Well, then we go to our foundational text, Matthew chapter 6, verse 8 through 13. And that's King James. And I, I, I want you to notice this because most of us, when we look at this text, when we look at Matthew 1 through 13, Matthew 6, 1 through 13, we think about the Lord's Prayer, right? And most of us, we, we, we process, we've been trained in, in Sunday school, and if you've been to any, any type of Bible studies about prayer, prayer, the prayer in Matthew 6 is our foundational prayer, right? Okay? We say it's the Lord's Prayer, but it's the foundational prayer. That's the prayer we learned when we were little kids, right? That's the prayer that you pray before you, before you go to sleep, right? Let's, let's, to, the, today the Lord wants to shine another light on that. All right. Let's look at verse eight. I'm not starting to pass at verse one. I think Pastor Marcus may go there next week. I want to start at verse eight. He says, be not ye therefore like unto them. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask of him. My God. So even before you ask, he knows. But you may say, then why do I ask? I'm going to show you in a minute. He says, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. He knows what I need before I ask. So what do I get that I need that he already knows? Right? How do I get it? How do I get what he already knows I need? I love it. Today our lesson is entitled The Kingdom is Voice Activated. 
The kingdom is voice activated. The kingdom is voice activated. Hey, Pastor Rose, good to see you walking up here. The kingdom is voice activated. Father, show us today how to use our voice. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want y'all to say with me, the kingdom, the kingdom is voice activated. Is voice activated. All right, all right. Amen. <laughs> I love Netflix and and um, you know I'm, I'm uh, and I love movies that are action packed. I love scientific movies. I love movies that are otherworldly. And so one day, Minister Stephanie, I was watching a movie. And it was a mystery movie. And the hero in the movie was getting ready to go into a loaded bank vault. Right? And instead of him using a key or a combination to get into the vault, he just spoke to the door. And when he spoke to the door, the doors open up. So what he did not have access to because there was a vault separating him from the money he spoke to. He spoke to the door. My God. And when he spoke to the door, all of a sudden the doors now, he could have beat on the door. <laughs> My God. He could have knocked on the door. He could have even visualized the door opening. My God. And imagined to himself that he was inside the vault. But the doors would have remained closed. Sealed. But when he spoke. Why did the doors open when he spoke? <laughs> I love y'all. I love when y'all are in my lesson. He spoke to the doors because the doors were protected by voice actuation. It was a voice Acti activated or active, yeah, voice activated lock. It was a voice activated lock. Just like your phone. Some of us have set up on our phone, it's not voice activated, although it is, because Siri seems to hear everything. Face sight. But my phone is set up. That when I put my face to it, it recognizes my face and all of a sudden the apps that are closed to me, I have access. <laughs> Kingdom citizens, did you know that you and I have a vault full of treasures in us? <laughs> Jesus said it like this that a good person out of the treasures of his heart brings forth good things or inside you are the valuables say it's inside me <laughs> Christ in you the Bible says is the hope of glory stay with me we, 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 we're going somewhere so it, 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 it's inside of me that everything that the father has promised yeah. is inside yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you know the things you need you already have yeah. Yeah. Amen. Mm. you're looking for somebody to provide it but you already got it But how do I get what's in me out of me? Yeah. My, God. <laughs> My God. It's because the power of life and death is. Why did 
Didn't he say the power of life and death was in your hand? Because what if you don't have any? I, I, that's not the lesson. That I want us to understand that as we begin to walk into our kingdom citizenship, as we begin to build the kingdom and as we begin to understand that our monies fund the kingdom and as we understand that the kingdom is not a what but a who I need you all to also understand that if you are to see the kingdom of God actuated actually come to being in your existence you have to open your mouth James describes, he says, that the tongue is the smallest member of the body, but the tongue has the most significant impact. But let me, do you realize that your voice can either release heaven or hell maintains its power because of your silence? Mm. How many of you are continuing to experience the same hell, the same challenge, the same difficulty because you have not opened your... The backbone of the king, of kingdom authority, Minister Sherry, and the power that we have been given that's been commissioned us is by opening our mouth. Now, I, I had to uh, uh, investigate God. So, so why is my mouth so important? Why is my voice and my words so important? He said, because I made you in my image and in my likeness. And if you look at what I did when I appeared on the scene, I didn't start there. I just appeared on the scene. What did I do to start things making happen or start things moving? I... What I declared, it had to be. And since you are made in my image and in my likeness, you got to use your mouth to see what you believe. Could we be seeing what we don't want to see because we're not speaking what we want to see? Uh-oh, did I say that right? Could we be seeing what we don't want to see because we're not speaking. Again, Mark eleven twenty four said, "Add, pray, ask, and believe you have received." So me receiving it is connected to me asking. Me asking is turned to the vehicle of a prayer. Me receiving is connected to me asking. Me asking is the vehicle called prayer. Hallelujah. How many of y'all pray? Amen. As a lifestyle and not an activity. It's interesting, Minister Stephanie, because God said in creation, notice, after he made Adam and Eve, he said, now I need you to be fruitful, multiply, have dominion, feel, and subdue. Amen. Wait, 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 wait. Be fruitful. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That means you're going to produce something. But not only am I going to produce something, what I produce is going to multiply. And what I multiply will give me the ability to have dominion. And when I have dominion, what he gives me dominion of will feel. Ooh, my. See, some of y'all got so many empty spaces in your life, so many empty places in your life, because you have not heed the admonishment, be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion. And you wonder why your cupboards are empty. Because you have 
understood that you have been given dominion. And because you have been given dominion, what you have authority. And all, all dominion mean is, I have authority. Woo, I have authority. Say, say, say with me, I have authority. I have authority. I have the authority of heaven. That's qualified. I have the authority of heaven. I don't have the authority of the government, but I have the authority of the king who the government sits on his shoulders. Glory to see you don't need legislative laws of man when you got the legislation of heaven. God help us. Am I making any sense? So I'm to have dominion, I'm to feel, and then notice what he said. He said, not only do I want you to be fruitful, Adam and Eve, not only do I want you to multiply, Adam and Eve, not only do I want you to have dominion, Adam and Eve, not only do I want you to feel, Adam and Eve, but then he said, I want you to subdue. How you subduing? I didn't say, how you doing? I said, how you subduing? Or perhaps you are being subdued. Perhaps you are being subdued. What's subduing you? What's riding your back? And you keep bending over so we can have more room to ride. Could it be if you stand up? If you stand up, what is stand up? Stand up is taking dominion. Oh, God have mercy. I'm getting excited about this lesson, Pastor. Ask your neighbor, what's your posture? And we know that if, if, we, if we follow the Bible, Dr. Philip, we understand that Adam and Eve lost their ability. They lost the ability to be fruitful. They lost the ability to multiply. They lost the ability to have dominion. They lost the ability to feel. And they could no longer subdue. But how many of you know Jesus came? They, the scriptures call him the last Adam. But why was it necessary that another Adam come? Was because the first Adam didn't do or lost what he was given. So the last Adam, and notice the text, the scripture calls him the last Adam. Because after him, there will be no others needed. So when the last Adam came, he came back to make us fruitful. He came back to help us multiply. He came back that we would have dominion and feel and subdue. So that's why, how many of you in here are in Christ? So if you are in Christ, the last Adam, then that means in you is the ability to be fruitful. In you is the ability to multiply. In you is the ability to have dominion and to feel and subdue, right? So you understand that you are now qualified. Yes. Amen. Right? Yes. So, if the last Adam is in me, and I have the ability to be fruitful, to multiply, to have dominion, to feel, and subdue, why are we not? Why are we not? Could it be because we're not using our voice? Or we're using our voice and saying the wrong thing? Are you using your voice correctly? Ask your neighbor, are you using your voice correctly? Are you using your 
So, I hear you. I hear you asking. So, Pastor Tony, how do I use my voice correctly? It's called confession. Now, most of you, when you think of confession, what do you think about? You think about repentance, right? Yeah. You think about communion. You think about being in that. And, uh, if you came out of a uh, Catholic church, you think about going into the, um, the confession booth and confessing. But you still didn't tell me what did you think confession is. It's so words, admitting, what you declare. Say that again. Confessing something. What, so, so when you think about confession, what do you? What is confession? What is confession? Speaking. Confining. Admitting to something. I love it. I love it. I love it. Sin. I love it. I love it. The Holy Spirit just said, "This is why we have not activated the kingdom." Because, because confession is not just words. Confession is not even just admitting. Confession is not just even repeating what you heard. God, I hear you today. I hope y'all getting the lesson. If y'all get nothing else, get this part. So what is confession, Tony? The Greek word is homolokia. And homolokio doesn't just mean to say the same thing. Because most of us, when we think about confession, you know, again, you all use admit, you all use words, we say the same thing. But confession is not just you repeating what you read. Okay. Help us, Father. Come on, Father. Confession is you agree. I don't just say it, but I come into agreement. So if there is sickness, in, and, and let, me tell, let me tell you how subconscious this is, and we don't even realize it. You go to your doctor's visit, and your doctor looks at your, your, your scan, your, your, your um, x-ray. He comes back in the room and he says, in this x-ray, I see a dark dot. I see, I see something, and it looks like cancer preach and immediately you go within yourself and you start saying oh the blood of Jesus oh I, I come against that I'm not sick I'm I'm healed and I'm made whole and that's what you're saying in your mind oh God I hear you today because kingdom is voice activated right yeah. So you, you're saying all of that in your mind. You're saying all of that in your mind. And then you get home. And you call your good girlfriend. And let me tell you what you say. I have cancer. What have you done? Homolokio. You have come into agreement with the diagnosis. You have come into agreement with the diagnosis of a man or a woman who is practicing medicine and you have not come into agreement with the God who made your body who said by your stripes or his stripes you're healed. So could we not be seeing kingdom is because we say what his word says but we don't agree with what his. Again, Matthew eleven twenty four is the principle. You can't receive what you don't come into agreement with. And so when we look at our text in Matthew 6. We literally walk through. It's funny, this text, I never saw this text in this way before, Pastor Rose, but this text 
actually teaches the believer how to use their voice. Our Father in heaven. So first, the first thing my voice is going to do is going to hollow his name. I'm going to honor that he's king of kings and lords of lords. That there is no one greater or above him. So I'm going to come in agreement with who he is. Holy Spirit just said, the reason why we don't have what he promised is because we haven't come in agreement with who he is. Mm. One, of, one, of, one, of, one scripture that's, that, that provides, uh, it confounds my mind, Pastor Rose, is the text that says, be still and know that he is God. When most of us in church, the way we were raised, the way we live, we are taught to perform, to do. If you don't do, you won't receive. If you don't do, you won't get. Do I? Am I the only one? But yet he says, be still. And be still has nothing to do with doing. It has to do with posture of heart. And so we, 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 we see when I start praying, understanding that my voice is the activator of heaven, that my voice released heaven into the earth, I first acknowledge who he is. And in acknowledging who he is, I know where all the power comes from. Many of us get frustrated. Because our power, we come to realize, is limited. How many of you have come to the realization you have limited power? But you keep trying to force your way. You keep trying to make something happen. But you just say you realize you got limited power. I got limited power. But I'm in Christ. And in Christ, I can do some things. <laughs> so, first, my voice will acknowledge who he is. Why is that important in, vo in voice activation? Because when I understand who the King of Kings is and the Lord of Lords is, when I open my voice, I won't speak about my limitations anymore. Uh-oh, did I say that? I won't speak anymore. You won't hear come out of my vernacular. I cannot do it. Oh, I'm messing y'all up because see, y'all go, I, I, I hear, let me tell you what I hear in the Holy Spirit. I hear this going back and forth. I, I sense in the spirit double dutch. You keep vacillating. And let me tell you what precipitates your vacillation. The magnitude of the problem. Because if it's a problem that you can rationalize and wrap your mind around, it's easy for you to agree with his word. But what when you can't make sense of it? What when there is no rhyme or reason? What when you don't have the why and you don't have the when? You don't know the where and you do what then? Do you still come in agreement? Or do you double dutch? And double dutch says a double minded man is woo! see we missed that part. A double minded man is unstable in all of his ways but the text don't stop there. What does the text say y'all? And he, shall, he can't receive or shall not receive anything. Oh, my God. Is that why I'm still in poverty? Is that why I'm still struggling with depression? Is 
that's why my, my relationships are still haywire. Because I, I said I agree, but then out of the other side of my mouth, I complain. Why are we complaining about something that's already been fixed? So, so he, he, he tells us start off with acknowledging who he is. But then notice what he says. He then says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. So my, vo my voice first acknowledges who's in control. And because I know he's in control, now I'm going to say, now release your control in the earth. Release thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is there sickness in heaven? No. Is there poverty in heaven? No. Is there depression in heaven? No. So why do you keep walking around saying I'm depressed? I'm teaching better than y'all responding, but I see, I see, I, I see you, I see you trying to suck it up. Go ahead, go ahead and get, 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 get a piece of bread, white bread, in, in the spirit, and, and sop it up. This is syrup. Just begin to sop it up. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But this, this, Holy Spirit, somebody, somebody just said, we forget that part. But can I share with you, that part is tied to the beginning of the prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So if I remember that he's my Father, he's not just your Father, he's my Father, he's my King, he's my Waymaker, he's my Deliverer, he's He's married So because I know who he is, I can release who he is into my realm. Right? Am I making any sense? <laughs> so if I release him into my realm, then I start telling what I want released. The next verse says, give us this day. Our day. <laughs> You're busy trying to plan for tomorrow. No, no, no. Begin to declare over your day what you need him to do today. What he will do today. He'll give you what you need tomorrow when tomorrow comes. That's what the Bible says, Minister Sherry. Oh, I just got it. I just got it. Because again, y'all remember, voice activation is connected to confession. What you are in agreement with. Oh God, I hear you. And I'm, and, and I'm going to confess, I've been struggling with this. Some of us are in next month trying to figure out how we're going to make it to next month. I have literally been waking up in the middle of the night trying to figure out what I'm going to do for, for the next few days, for the next month coming. And he said, you, you haven't come in agreement with the kingdom. You haven't activated the principles of the kingdom. You're worried about tomorrow and I need you to focus on what am I doing today? Did I make a way today? Did I open a door today? Did I heal you today? Did I deliver you today? Did I keep you today? So as you read, oh, are y'all getting this principle? It's principle. It's principle. So I give us this day our daily bread. 
And then he says, and I need you because this is something that keeps you from keeping your mouth, that keeps your mouth closed. I need you to start forgiving your debtors. Because I can't release you from your debt until you release them from theirs. I can't re Oh God, okay, you said that. He just said, some of your blessings are being held up because you are not forgiving. Somebody that didn't do you right, you're still holding on to it. Somebody who mistreated you, you're still holding on to it. You're still holding on to the debt of somebody else. And he says, as you forgive your debts, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do you see it's, this is connected? And then he says, after you, and again, all of this is voice activated. So I, I need you all to do something. Thank you. The Holy Spirit just told me to, to have y'all do this. I don't need you to call anybody's name out, but I need you, whoever you have not forgiven, begin to release them right now. Begin to release the ought, begin to release the offense, begin to release them from what they did, when they did it. It may have been when you were five years old. It may have been when you were 12 years old. It may have been your ex-husband. It could be your current husband, your current wife, but begin to release them from the offense. Go ahead, start doing it. Come on, come on, come on. Whatever it is, I don't know who it is. I don't need to know who it is, but you know. Father, I, I release them. Father, I forgive them. Father, I let them go. Father, yeah, they did me wrong, and it bruised me, and it hurt me, and I held on to it, but I let it go. I didn't understand how could they betray me, but I let it go. I can't understand how they let me down, but I let it go. He then says, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Can I ask you all a question? Because we're talking about the kingdom is voice activated, yes. right? Yes. Is there any temptation in heaven? No, no. I don't believe that. No. There has to be. They were thrown out of heaven. No, no, no. No, no, no. Under the new one. Yeah, okay, because. No. There's, there, there's no temptation to sin in heaven. Adam and Eve weren't thrown out of heaven. I'm talking about the Satan and the third of the angels. And, and that, there's three heavens. Okay. All right. We, we can go deep. We can, we can dig out the text. There's literally three heavens. There's one heaven where the angels reside. That's where all the demonic activity occurs. That's where they would, that's where, because so, so when, when Lucifer was thrown out of heaven, he was thrown out of that heaven. Okay, because the ultimate heaven is the throne of God. So let me, so let me break it down. The first heaven is the sky. Okay. The, when you look up and you see the stars, you see the galaxy, that's the first heaven. The second heaven is the, where principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness reside. Then the third heaven. Y'all follow me? That, does that make sense? Does that help? Okay. So, so temptation to sin doesn't reside in heaven. But this is the other... Oh, God. Okay. The other thing you got to see is when Lucifer was tempted to sin, sin wasn't in heaven, sin was in Lucifer. That's why he was thrown out. Because there is no Alright, alright, alright. Am I making any sense? So, so after, after we realize that there is no... You got something? Yes. Yes. If Lucifer was in heaven, how did sin get in him? That's that's real good. That's real good. So sin got in Lucifer 
Because anytime you get out of God's presence, you're subject to sin. Lucifer, get this, Lucifer was the prime creation before mankind. No, he was the primal. I love this, y'all. Can we? Can we just teach a little bit? He, he was the primal creation. The, the scripture says in Ezekiel that in him was pipes because he was created. He was the prince praiser. His assignment was to bless God and all of the angels chimed in to bless him. But what happened? The Bible says iniquity was found in him. I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I see your face. I'm, I'm going to bring it home. So him being the primal creation, right? Because sin was found in him, he was kicked out of the presence of God. Then God goes and makes another prime creation called man. How did sin get in man? Because man got out of God's face and got into Lucifer's face. Am, am I making sense? You, you, come on, talk to me, Earth. How did, still, how did sin get into Lucifer, though? Free will, just like we have free will. How does sin get into us? To get out of God's it's a choice. See, see, un understand. See, see, see. We we think we think God created sin. God didn't create sin. He created man. When he created man, he gave man the option to choose. Deuteronomy says, "Choose death or life." That is, but because see, God didn't create us to be robots. If he wanted robots, he wouldn't have created human beings. He would have created human doings. Right? But he created human beings. And when he created us as human beings, he gave us free will. But free will doesn't mean free will. I, I, am I giving y'all too much? And free will, because he's given it, he says, I set before you life and death. Notice, he sets before you life and death, but because of the love of God, what does he do? He tells you to choose life, but he doesn't make you choose life. Am I, am I making sense? Any other questions? Let's make it a Bible study, y'all. Yes, Brother Philip. It's funny, I had this conversation earlier this week. Um, and I brought up what sin was, well, really, was Lucifer here before the creation of man. Was sin on the earth before the creation of man. And so that was the conversation. And, I was, yeah, so. and, 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 and your answer is? It was because it was in it was in Lucifer. Right, but he, I he was cast down to the earth for the spirit to use the serpent yes. to deceive Adam and Eve. Right, and basically, so understand it in, 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 in layman's terms, because when Lucifer was cast out of heaven, he lost position. Now, this is this is the gotcha though. The Bible says he took one third of heaven with him. That's serious, y'all. So evidently, he had he had gotten to them enough to contaminate them, to influence them. But when he was cast to the earth, sin embodied him, right? Okay, and sin in its elementary term is separation from God. 
Follow me? Sin is separation from God. And so when he meets Adam and Eve, he's trying to get them on his bandwagon because he has been divested of his throne. That's why when he comes to Eve, he, he presents to her like God is trying to keep something from her. Because that's how Lucifer, that's how Lucifer felt. Like God was trying to keep something from him. God didn't want to share his glory. God didn't want to share his power. And, and so when you feel like God doesn't want to share with you, what do you do? You make things happen yourself. Am I making any sense? More questions? And so, but so, so let's, let's, we probably ain't going to get back to our lesson. It's 351. I'm, I'm going to shut it down for now. But I, I want you all to understand, when you look at this prayer in Matthew 6, Minister Ramona, it is to prompt you as a believer to understand that you activate heaven on earth through your voice. You see the kingdom realize through your voice. My question to us this afternoon, what is your voice saying? What is your voice saying? Because scripture tells me that he comes looking for his word. Yes, ma'am. So, if, if I'm reading, hearing you correctly, that we have the power to change our entire situation. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Absolutely. No matter what it is. No matter what. Because again, your job as a kingdom citizen is to bring heaven to earth. But the only way, see, the only way we bring heaven into earth is not by your complaining. You don't bring heaven into earth by you constantly declaring the problem. The negative, thank you, Sister Ida. You, you, you don't bring heaven into earth by you continuing to speak what cannot happen. Why? Because God is after his word. What did he say in his word? What has he declared about you in his word? I know what the earth is saying. I know what the doctor has said. I know what the condition in your body is screaming to you. But what did his word? I know your limbs are saying they ain't it. He said, put me in remembrance of how you feel. Y'all missed it. He said, put me in remembrance of what's going on. of the struggle you have. He says, put me in remembrance of my word. He says, I hasten. I hasten to perform your healing. I hasten to perform your deliverance. I hasten to perform your victory. And this is the problem. I see you. I'm going to come to you, Brother Philip. This is the problem, though. He says, I hasten to perform my word. Yeah. Let me tell you where we slip up. Yeah. <laughs> come on, Elder D. Because <laughs> we only have expectation in the area that we have agreement. Wow. We only have expectation in the area that we have agreement. So, if I agree that he's a healer, then I'm expecting him to heal me. But if I have not come into agreement that he can remedy the broken marriage, then my marriage will stay broken. If I have not come into agreement that he can heal the person who's in my family that has cancer riding their body and they seem to be dying, if I haven't come into agreement, 
agreement. It makes you think. I, I need you to think. I need you to think. I need you. What are you agreeing with? I want you to look at each of your situations in your, in your life right now. Oh my soul. What have you come into agreement with? And you didn't even realize you came into agreement with it. But all you constantly see is that same thing. If you have money problems, that means you've come into agreement with it. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me, y'all. Yeah, yeah, you have. Yeah, you have. Because see, your thought process is, if I have this and that, I can do this and that. But no, no, no. He said, the cattle on the, th on the hill belongs to me. So if I come in agreement with, my father has everything I need. And so I come in agreement with, he has everything I need. And he's not stingy and giving. I may not possess it right now, but I got it. So Sister Ida said, but I can't see it. But then that's where faith comes in. Because see, faith is the currency of heaven. And so if I'm going to align with heaven and I'm going to believe what heaven has for me, how do I access it? By faith. Not by your corneas. Not by your retina. Not by your eyeballs. What a word. And now you have an opportunity to make a decision about what you just heard. Those of you who are watching who have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, today is your day. God desires to make you a vessel for His glory. I know I need His help and why He is Lord of my life. If you know you need His help and you want Him to be Lord of your life, will you pray this prayer with me? I repent, Father, of all my sins, known and unknown. I'm sorry, Father, for, for the wrong I've done against you. And I confess I need you and want you to be Lord of my life. Forgive me and come into my life and make me new and be my Savior and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to text SAVE to 202-519-9518 and we'll follow up with you. My sister, my brother, welcome to the family of God. We want to share some more information with you, so text us. These are some of the things we have going on at Face to Face Worship Center. Every Tuesday evening at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Join us for our Zoom Bible study. You don't want to miss this interactive time of intuitive study of God's Word. Join us every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for in-person worship at 9121 Piscataway Road, Suite 4B, Clinton, Maryland, 20735. Or virtual worship on all our social media platforms, Facebook Live, and our YouTube channel. We would love to see you in person or virtually. Our corporate intercessory prayer is every Wednesday and Friday at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us by dialing into our conference line at 319-527-4008. Come pray with us as we pray for the nation, the world, and you. There are several ways you can give here at Face to Face Worship Center. Givelify, look for Face to Face Worship Center. Cash App, dollar sign Face to Face WC. Our website at f2fwc.org and click the donate link or Zelle by dialing 240-563-2792 and give your offering there. All this information should be scrolling across your screen. If you prayed the prayer of salvation with us today, text SAVED 
to 202-519-9518. And we will contact you to provide more information about how to walk out your new relationship with Jesus Christ. Welcome to the family of God. If you are looking for a church home, join us. We are the place of intimate worship where you can grow both spiritually and socially. For more information, text PARTNER to 202-519-9518 and we will send you more information about our ministry. Continue blessings and we look forward to you worshiping with us again next Sunday.